All right, welcome in everybody. It is Thursday afternoon. It is not Monday night. We were supposed to have Sarah on Monday night talk Memphis soccer, have Daniel with us, uh, being that he is all go Tigers go, but unfortunately he's not, but it's okay because we have to get the story. You know, I was just telling our guests before she comes on, you know, the, the members of Memphis Tigers soccer that we have been following for the last three, four years are gone now. So we need someone else that we're going to jump on, be the number one fan. And so with that, Sarah, how are you doing today? Good. I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. Uh, you know, I just got done doing landscaping for my wife. As much as it beat me down, it's going to make her happy. So <laughs> I say good because my wife is happy and that's ultimately, you know, happy wife, happy life. So and then I'm on here talking to you. So we got that going. But before we get into your story, I want to, you know, break the ice. I want to talk women's sports right now. I was just down in Fort Worth covering gymnastics, um, packed out crowds. You know, you see the the WNBA draft and you've seen the NCAA tournament and just what's going on. Obviously, we know soccer has been killing it when it comes to, to women. So, you know, as a female athlete, you know, how proud does it make you to see you not just like one or two sports, but all the sports making another step, um, just showing that women's sport are equally entertaining as men's? Man, it's it's amazing. You know, growing up like as a girl playing soccer, like even any sports, seeing like the professional athletes, like the spotlight they get and all that and just dreaming of having the same like it's just it's about loving the sport obviously but then also like getting recognized as a female athlete and I think it's just amazing like how far women's soccer and any women's sport actually came and especially the last one or two years even with NIL deals and then what you see with um uh, with Paige backers and like all those those women's basketball players going on right now it's just amazing honestly yeah and for me you know I've always been about women's soccer over men's the the physicality level in which y'all play with it's just different and you know uh, I love it especially with you know y'all in the SEC watch a lot of SEC games and then y'all always you know are playing you know Ole Misses and Mississippi States of the world and I just you don't find that in the men's soccer. Obviously, they have a little little bit more talent level and ball skill, but I'll trade that off for the way that y'all play. Um, I mean, there's no game where y'all are not going 100 percent, especially Memphis. Uh, you know, I've seen games of other teams where uh, girls are walking around and I'm like, oh, that's unacceptable. I'm like my first comment out loud is Memphis would never. So. Um, I appreciate watching you girls. And, you know, like I said, I was just at gymnastics, you know, basketball and even volleyball. I've been going to some college volleyball games and it's it's real intense. And I appreciate those girls. I wouldn't be able to block their shots there. I'm telling you, those girls serve it down like 100 miles an hour. I wouldn't, I thought, honestly. I mean, I've had volleyball for a little bit, but nah, that's 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 crazy. Yeah, that's it's right. tough. It's tough. <laughs> So let's talk music for a second before we get this thing started. If you could go see any musician anywhere, who are you going to see? Where are you going to see them? Mm. Honestly, I kind of got into country ever since I came to the United States. So Morgan Wellen probably is a big one. Um, Nashville, I mean, country, got to be Nashville. Um, but on the other hand, I feel like big one for me would be Eminem, honestly. And Eminem doesn't matter where. I just doesn't matter. <laughs> I love the second answer better so much. First of all, because I'm a big fan. But the first one, he has said like nine out of every 10 times. I give the guy his credit, right? Because if nine out of every 10 athletes are coming on here saying him, he's doing it right. But it's like, we always want variety. And so when people come on and they're like, more and more, I'm like, oh, not again. <laughs> Um, definitely like the second one. Can't go wrong with either of them, no doubt. So the next question will be better. You know, if you can go anywhere in the world, see anybody play, you know, athletically, it doesn't matter the sport, you know, where you're going, who are you going to see, where are you going to see? I know this is probably something that you've thought about in the back of your mind. Definitely. Um, my number one, Serena Williams. Always, always love tennis, but she's just amazing um probably I don't actually know where I would love to see her at just any game like just meeting her would be a dream um and then say, you know it'd be any one of the four majors right because you want to see her playing for the biggest one tennis would be hard for me because you have to be quiet and I like to to be loud <laughs> mm, that's valid yeah that's that's true 
they are really respectful with uh, the noises so which is funny because they're really loud we uh we were in the hospital right after my son was born and the tv had got left on espn by me and we were sitting there in the room and it's quiet and all of a sudden you heard the loud grunts of uh two women playing uh tennis and it was like man they are loud but they were hitting it so hard so I, you know whatever works that that's true yeah i always make fun of the noises i can't lie <laughs> every time they hit a ball it's just it's it's hilarious <laughs> no doubt so let's get into your story i'm fascinated i will tell you right off the top that um my grandparents are from Germany. It's the reason why I'm actually uh, a Germany fan over USA, even though I served in the military and everything. So I'm interested to to hear this. And so where are you from? Um, I'm from Hasenweiler, which is like a really, really small town. Um, I'm about like 45 minutes away from Switzerland. So really, really deep in the south. Um, maybe Munich is probably the next closest city you would know. Um, I'm like two hours away from that. Yeah, um, and I, I mean, I am familiar with just the map itself because my, my grandmother used to show me. I've unfortunately not been there yet. It is the top of my bucket list. The closest I've been is is Disney World and Epcot, and, and I hang around in fake Germany. But <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, I think it's pretty cool that, you know, you're right there that clo close to Switzerland. It's kind of um, kind of like Memphis is, right? You can just get into Mississippi or Arkansas within, you know, 45 minutes, same thing with where you grew up. So you said it was small, like, is it like farmland type small, like out in the middle of nowhere? What are we talking about? Um, Kind of, yeah. So we have probably like around like 800 people living there. So it's, it's like not too small. Like we have, we have country around, but like, it's still a little like village, you could say. But we definitely we have a lot of land around. Like we have a huge garden back home, and I feel like everyone has at least a couple hundred yards of garden around their house. So it's definitely more country than uh <laughs> than people living there. Yeah. So let's talk about you know family. Do you have uh, brothers, sisters? You got mom and dad in the house. What's what's growing up look like in the house? Yeah. So I have two older sisters, and then I live with my parents, my mom, my dad. And we actually had my grandparents living right above us. Um, my grandpa already died a couple of years ago, but my grandma's still there. So, so yeah, kind of two, two, three generations in one house. Gotcha. So you, you talk about the sisters were y'all close. Was there a lot of competitiveness? You know, what was it like having the two sisters with you growing up? Um, I would say me and my older sister, we were always somewhat close and kind of going against the middle one. Um, but yeah, we like I was a little bit always competitive, so I definitely was always fighting with my especially middle middle sister. Um, yeah, but I mean competitive always. I mean, if it was about food and you had to split evenly, if someone had a gram more, man. My parents didn't have a good day. I can tell you that. Yeah. But so the did they play, the first... on the competitive note, did they play soccer as well? Yeah, they both did, but like never on a higher level, I would say. Um, but yeah, my middle sister stopped playing when she was probably 13 years old. And then my older sister so, still plays, but on a low level. So. I got you. So, you know, obviously something that we know anytime we talk to, um, someone who's you know internationally born is is soccer's different right like you know I think back to the episode when we had Shannon Cook um, uh, from the United Kingdom it's it's just the the level of competition growing up is just so much different than it is here so you know growing up just how hard was it and then what's it like do you actually have um, a league close within you or are you having to travel a lot to play what you know what's it like over there yeah, so with me growing up, I started playing because of watching my sister play. Um, and she actually played for a women's team, but the women's team was about like 20, 30 minutes away. And I always was close with my neighbor. So I actually started playing on a boys team and I played for the boys team for about 13 years. Um, so basically half of my life, I've always played with boys. So obviously boys are very competitive, very physical. And I think growing up with that, it gave me a really good chance in getting the uh, state selection team. Um, so the competitiveness kind of just kept going and kept going. And the pressure always 
got higher and higher, you know, like first I got selected for my local um, selection team, then for my regional team um, up to the state team. So I guess that, yeah, growing up in Germany with soccer being such a huge sport is just always spotlight on. Absolutely. So, you know, you're playing there. When does the talk become about, you know, the possibility of going to the States and playing, you know, college soccer? Was this something, was it early into high school? Was it late into high school? When did the conversation start to, you know, begin to be an idea? Um, I mean, playing for college basically started, I think, two years actually before I went to college. Because we play for clubs in Germany, we don't play for high school or for our colleges, so the system is obviously way different. Um, so playing for the state team started, I would say, when I was fourth grade, because that's when I first got selected for my local team. And yeah, starting up from fourth grade, I kind of worked my way up um, until I was 17, 18 years old. Um, when I was about to finish high school and we actually had a presentation about going to the United States and having the possibility um, for playing for the college and studying at the same time. And that's actually when I talked to my parents about it and was like, guys, that's great opportunity. Opportunity Like I can develop my physicality. I can develop my, my um, school skills. Like it's just education and soccer combined. So um, I think, yeah, when I was 17 years old, it was the first time I actually thought about it. And yeah, we kind of started uh, the way over here, I guess. Yeah. And I mean, if I am a college coach and I'm looking at your resume and I see the German futsal um, championship, the South German futsal championships, you know, you, you play four consecutive seasons, um, always a part of a team that is winning, you know, clearly a, a big time member of that um, you're somebody who, you know, plays in an organization where I know that you're well coached and trained. And if you watch the highlight tape, just based on what I've seen in a season and watching you, I obviously know that you work hard. So it's something that I know if I'm a coach, I'm trying to get all over. So how does Eastern Illinois become the school for you? Um, It was kind of like a last, not last minute decision, but kind of like the last somewhat option I had. Um, when I started talking to colleges, it's kind of hard when you're overseas because we don't know much about the system here, about the schools, about what is division one, division two, division three. Um, so often like you just take what you get, like, unless you play for a club like Bayern Munich, they have sometimes connections to like bigger colleges, but I didn't have that. My, my club team was very small. Um. So yeah, through the agency, I kind of started talking to colleges and then I had offers for Liberty University and then Eastern Illinois. And I think those were like my two main options I was interested in mm. since I knew I do want to go to Division One. I. I knew that I didn't know what Division Two is, mm. but I didn't really want to go there because I heard Division One is the best league. So I was like, okay, definitely pick the one school and then Eastern Illinois it was. It makes me wonder because, like you said, it's it's real hard on the recruiting process. You know, obviously, the reason, you know, we talk about Maya and we talk about Grace and, you know, Sierra and all those, you know, obviously, Coach has, you know, a nice tight connection up there in Canada. It makes me wonder if, you know, he even saw you at that time for it to be a consideration and if you possibly would have been a Tiger earlier. Because when, as soon as you said that, that registered to me because that's them. And then I brought up Shannon Cook to you and it was a – connection with Sean Hudson obviously she's from Wales and so um, in both those situations they did already have you know a leg up whereas you didn't have that right so you got to go so I assume based upon what we're saying you committed without even going over there and taking a visit like you know normal players would get to do right yeah all right so you get there um, obviously major culture shock you're talking about going from Germany to Illinois um, you know, how much of an adjustment was it? Were you able to to fit in nicely or did it take a while? You know, what was it like? Um, I was always a person who was kind of like travel adventure and like open to like cultures. Um, I definitely had a culture shock. The first week was probably the hardest one, but I think my team back there, they're like still like family. And I think they, we had many internationals actually back then. 
and they really took me in well. I also had a teammate from Germany and that helped a lot just with like getting through like the first grocery shoppings and like, you know, just simple stuff. Um, yeah, well, I would say it took me probably like two months until I actually settled down and was like, okay, here I am. I'm in the United States and this is how it works. This is what life is now. Yeah, so you obviously had no problem transitioning to the soccer field, you know, named to the all OVC second team twice and, um, you know, newcomer of the year, played 2,600 minutes and 30 matches played, um, you know, so clear success when you got there, just, you know, for you competition level and, you know, you don't have to play the humble card or whatever. Was it, did it come easy for you because you're coming from where you were, where probably the club competition level was harder than division two? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Easton is a really small division one school, like, and they played in OVC, which it's a good conference, but where I came from, it's probably wasn't my my league level. Like my league definitely was maybe one or two leagues over OVC level. Um, so yeah, it was definitely it came kind of easy to me because I sticked out, that's what my coaches said, I sticked out right away from the beginning. And um, kind of took on that that highlight spot on the team, I would say. Yeah, but, you know, ultimately, the good thing is you, you are playing soccer, but you're over there getting your education regardless, right? You're getting your first two years in school. Um, that's one of the main reasons you come here to play soccer. Obviously, you know, I'm sure the goal is to play professionally, but you also want to make sure you get your degree along the way. And that's the advantages you take of coming here and play. So you're able to at least get your foot on the ball, as they say. You're able to get acclimated to the United States and you're able to start your education. So that's cool within itself. So when does the phone call come from um, Coach Mangan about the opportunity to play for Memphis? Yeah, so after my third semester playing at Eastern, I was like, okay, I now want to go pro. I now I need to play in a higher college um, to achieve that. So I went in a transfer portal. And then I think, I don't quite remember when exactly, but it was pretty much, I think Memphis was the last school who contacted me. Um, and yeah, I think it went really quick, actually. I think within two weeks, um, Two weeks left in transfer portal. I he called me and I was like, "What's up?" And he was like, "You're interested," and I was like, "All right, sounds good. <laughs> let me let me figure out the other colleges." And then Memphis it was. So how exciting is it coming to a team with a lot of foreign players, a lot of veteran leadership, and a team that just had went to the Sweet Sixteen? So you know you're coming to a program that is you know set up for success. It was huge. I mean, knowing more about the, the colleges here, them seeing going to the Sweet Six team in the year before, and I had high expectations. I came to the team. Um, I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna nail it like on my last team, like it's gonna be easy. <laughs> Reality check after the first day. Like they are great players, and I, I knew what I'm gonna get into. Um I prepared myself for that, but yeah, I had I had really high expectations, and I think that they fulfilled them 100%. Yeah, when you look at, you know, you got your three Canadian captains and you look at Momo and you look at you, it's, I mean, he's doing what he's got to do. Like I said, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that your foreign players are playing a higher level of soccer. So he's recruiting in and that's why Memphis is making the strides it's making because y'all are so much technically sound, you know, the way that y'all, y'all move the ball fluidly. It's, you know, it, I'm sure it didn't even take long for the chemistry to to work in. But the first thing I noticed watching um, the first game I see you is Grace's ability to be able to move up more offensively. Before you were here, and because you didn't get to see it, Grace was always that one lone defender that stayed back. Okay. And first game I noticed right out the gate, she's pushing up, and you're that one lone defender. And then – um, you know, with me not knowing anything about you yet, I'm like, oh, well, I'm a little nervous. You know, I'm used to that being grace. And then I see, you know, you handle it no problem and continues with every game I saw. So it shows a lot coming in, being your first year within the program. But coach, you know, trust you to be that the anchor on the back end to make sure that everything is OK. And so I watched you flourish. So, you know, how does that feel coming in, knowing that he's putting trust in you early to be that person? 
it was it was humbling and huge at the same time. I mean, I know our coaches don't don't trust anybody easily just like that. And getting getting their respect and their trust from our coaches um obviously is is huge for me as a player to like keep working hard and just paying them back basically. Um just trying to help the team out as best as I can, work as hard as I can to achieve my goals. Uh yeah, I mean coming in and getting the trust right away is is well, don't even know. I don't have words for that. Well, when I knew that the team was, you know, I'm gonna kind of transition to talking about the team for a second. Um, when y'all went to Alabama, we know we're not even talking about the fact that y'all got cheated in that game and, and Grace was so mad after her when she talked to me. Yeah. But y'all were there, there was they had an attendance record. There was like twenty five hundred people there. Um, full environment and y'all went toe to toe with them and it did to take that call in the end to to give them the win but I already know just from the sweet 16 the year before how good Memphis is but that game was where I was like okay this team is ready to make a run at this thing again they're ready um, just top to bottom looking at the roster and so I felt good after that and then you know American Athletic Conference it just showed you know y'all didn't struggle at all just kind of ran through it so it was about what y'all were going to do when it comes to the tournament. And, of course, um, I do have a complaint that – and here was the thing, Sarah. People outside of Memphis had the complaint. People in the soccer world respect Memphis, and they hated the way y'all got seated. It was very disrespectful, and they put you in a situation. Um, you know, you should have never even been there. And granted, y'all lost to a lower seed. I, I feel like y'all y'all should have been um, somewhere else. But nonetheless, you get the draw that you do. And, of course, we only root for one other team in this house. You see all the LSU stuff. We root for LSU first in most sports, but soccer we don't. Living here, um, we go. But this is the second time in three seasons because two years ago, I don't know if you were aware that they hosted yeah. them again. And it's like, so I root for two teams, and here we go again. One of them has to go home first game. But I had been to four LSU games earlier that season, and I've been to plenty of Memphis. And – there was no doubt in my mind who was going to win. It was actually closer than I thought it would be, but I was pretty confident. But, you know, what was it like that first game? You're hosting a postseason game. Um, this is the biggest game you've been into up until this point. You're going against an SEC team. You know, just how much fun was that match? Indescribable. I mean, I was just enjoying the full 90 minutes, even warm up, everything, the whole day. I was just so happy being there. Um having the honor to play in a game like that is huge. Um, coming from a smaller division one school, not really able, you know, to, to get there. And then all of a sudden you stand in a game like that, um, expected to win. And it was just so much fun. So let, let me ask you, you know, the next game, not going to harp on it, but I happened to watch them the previous game against Arkansas, you know, upset them. Right. And Arkansas, I was already looking ahead to the rematch because the Arkansas Memphis Sweet 16 game the year before was easily the best game. And I needed a rematch because especially Maya Jones getting the redemption on the penalty kick. And uh, I think Arkansas got caught looking ahead. And then I don't think y'all got caught looking ahead as much as it was just, you know, um, I don't know. That's the question I got for you. When it comes to sports, right, I know how it happens a lot in basketball more than any. But in soccer, can a team just get hot at the right time to where they just start beating teams that, you know, well, let's call it what it is, you know, clearly better than them? I mean, definitely. I think when it comes to those moments, all that matters is focusing on a one game and coming together as a team. Mm -hmm. I mean, we you could tell on that game, like, we were fighting for each other. Like, we left everything out on the, on the field and... I think it's hard beating teams who actually have a connection like that because, yeah, you can be great at, at playing soccer. You can be great at, I don't know, taking a play on one versus one, but it doesn't help you when, when you beat one player and there's a second player right behind and the second player takes the ball, you're still going to lose the ball. And if you have a team who's willing to protect every single teammate, I think it just com comes down to that, that it is possible that, you know, a team who is not expected to win it's going to make a run and it's going to get further than everyone thought. Yeah. And so we had Grace and Maya come on together right after and, you know, wanted to know what coach said. And 
I wondered if he was going to be disappointed and it was what you just spoke to. You know, he said he felt like y'all left a hundred percent out there and that's all he can ask for. Right. You know, it's one thing if you lost because it was your own fault, you weren't out there putting forth the effort. And so to me, obviously you wanted to make at least a sweet 16 again, like the previous season. But I think with the national recognition, with the way y'all won the conference, the way you didn't dominate it, um, you know, getting to the second round again. I feel like, you know, it wasn't a step forward, but I don't feel like Memphis lost a step and it's not a disappointing season to me. And I think with a lot of y'all returning, obviously you're losing a couple of your, or no, you're losing all three captains, but I mean, y'all have so much talent that was sitting on the, you look at a girl like Ashley, right? Who was only getting spot minutes, but when she did, she was scoring. Um, and then you look at someone like Momo who's going to come back and lead. And so, and y'all had girls on the bench just waiting for their opportunity. So, I know the Memphis is just going to continue to do what they're doing. So with that, where are y'all at training wise? Are y'all, um, are y'all hitting the weight room right now? Are y'all doing practice fields? Where are we at and getting prepared for next season? Oh, uh, we actually just finished. Um, we had the last game against Ole Miss already. So the girls are about to be off for summer. Um, but I know that girls still practice today. We had a couple small sided and then we still hit the weight room. I think everyone just does their job, does the run still, and just goes to the, to the rack um, and plays plays with each other. So I think for now it's to get a little bit of rest in and then come back with fresh legs and new energy to have another good season. Yeah, so do you get to go back uh, home during this rest or are you just staying here? Um, I will be home for two weeks, actually, because uh, my sister's getting married. So <laughs> cheers to that. Um, but for the rest of the summer, I will stay in Georgia, uh, Statesboro, and I will play for a summer team called Tormenta FC. So I will I will keep hitting the ball and, you know, keep it rolling. Yeah, no no breaks for you, which, you know, it's going to be cool. You're going to go back over there and play. But you're also going to, like you said, you're going to be doing stuff with your family. So I think it'll be good for you. Um, while you still will be playing soccer, you'll still be refreshing yourself. And so... I think that's a good opportunity. Um, how much longer you got till you head back home? Uh, let's see, about like three three weeks, I think, yeah. Yeah, because you should be about done with classes, right? Uh, I actually, yeah, some girls still have finals. I don't have any finals this semester, so I actually finished my last assignments and I'm I'm good to go, basically. Nice. Well, we got one more assignment for you. We got our game that we play with every guest called This or That. You down to play? Yep. All right. So it's very simple. Just like it sounds, I give you two options. You choose one or the other. Can't say both. Can't say neither. This is brought to you by the Athletic Collection. The posters that are behind me on the wall, you can get posters. You can get T-shirts. Your favorite athletes help them through NIL. They have just about every school. Um, unfortunately, most of these Memphis girls were talking about international players. I would have had um, – you know, Grace and Maya a long time ago, they unfortunately don't get to do it and neither do you. So um, that's why you don't see Memphis behind me, but they would have had a poster uh, immediately, but go out there and support uh, the athletic collection, support these athletes, but let's get into it. Do you prefer to grill out, you know, kind of like go outside and barbecue or do you like going out to eat at a restaurant? Uh, I would say barbecue. What's your favorite thing? My favorite what? Favorite thing to, to, to eat off the grill. Oh, um, yeah, I, I'm complaining about a good good hamburger, honestly. <laughs> You're simple. I'm with you. All right. Would you rather have a nice house or a nice car? I would say house. Yeah, I might have to take this question off. Nobody said car yet, and I've just been waiting for somebody so I can just figure out what car it is that they want more than a house. But I haven't got it yet. I don't know if I'm going to get it. This next one, however, is mm -hmm. is split on everybody that answers. So we'll see. Would you rather trip and fall in public or would you rather pass gas in public? Oh man. I I you know, I take the fall. I gotta take the fall. <laughs> not not me. I think falling is embarrassing. I'm just gonna have to rip it and say I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I don't I don't wanna have to look at everybody possibly laughing at me while I'm on the ground. You know, I would laugh with them, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's the best way. If, if you do it like that, then you're not embarrassed. So I, I, I see what you're getting at. Um, you know, hey, something that I didn't ask. We, you know, we brought up the food. It's not a this or that question. Um, but I forgot to ask you, 
What is your favorite German dish? I'm going to see if it's something that maybe I got to eat as a kid before my grandparents passed. I don't know if you know that, but it's called Käsespätzle. Mm. You can translate it as German mac and cheese, basically. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's homemade. So when my grandma makes it. If there's anything that's a dead giveaway that I have in my blood, um, my family thinks I'm absolutely, this family obviously that doesn't have any ties, thinks I'm absolutely disgusting because I will load sauerkraut on a, on a big hot dog and they're like, that is disgusting. And I'm like, I love it. I live for it. Not, nothing wrong with that. Had, I'm telling you that. Yeah, that's something they had in um in the the Germany part of Epcot Disneyland. I was talking. About. It's not. It wasn't like a regular hot dog. It was your is your big um you know sausage with it placed on there, and then the mustard. And it's just like, oh, I mean, this is one of the most underrated things. So, and I liked it better than um uh what is a what is the thing that Grace made me try in Canada um poutines. Yeah, I think mm. that's what it's called. Yeah. But Gene, not even yeah. close not even close all right agree. this is an important question to me i love the uniform question especially when it comes to memphis because i like them both what do you like better the blue uniforms or the white uniforms mm, good question i am i'm white totally i don't know what it is but when i put on a white uniform there's nothing going past me yeah, it's that. That's what I was actually going to say. Is white feels like a business, you know, uniform. Like it is, it is serious. The blue is you're more, you know, it's got the pop. It's beautiful, but I, I feel like when you see the white, y'all just look like professionals out there. Yeah. All right. Would you rather get trapped in a haunted house or be trapped in the jungle overnight? <sighs> I can't do I can't do ghosts and shit. No, it's definitely the channel. Yeah, I rather get bit by the snake than getting hunted by a ghost. Absolutely. I hear you. you know what? I gotta ask this question. It was uh, from last season, but I'm curious to to see your route. We used to ask, um, would you rather be stuck with a grizzly bear or a tiger? And now preface it by saying both situations suck. You're probably not surviving either, but. If you had to pick one to just try to figure it out, which one are you picking? You know what? If I die, I die big. And I would totally go for the tiger because my tigers are my favorite animal animals. They are precious. They are beautiful. They are smart. I go with the tiger 100%. Absolutely. I, uh, you know, it is, it is wild that, you know, I'm an LSU fan. I'm a Memphis fan from here. Um, up until time passed, you know, of the 13 schools that through division one through three, 13 of them have a tiger mascot. Memphis and LSU were the only two that have live mascots. Obviously, Mike is still down there in his habitat in LSU, but it was cool because the tiger is my favorite uh, animal. And it's not because I'm a, a Tigers fan, but it, it's pretty cool. They're just such beautiful animals. And I love watching them because we have two cats at home and the way that they move. And then you watch a tiger. It's just crazy how one's 600 pounds and one's like five pounds and they move exactly the same. Yeah, totally agree. Which is the reason why a tiger would be scared, right? Because you're not going to outmaneuver that thing. Like it may be big. It's it's agile. It's going to climb the tree with you. There's there's nowhere. That was the thing. Somebody said one time that they'd climb a tree and I was like, you do realize the tiger can climb a tree, right? Like <laughs> you, you ain't going nowhere. So, all right. Do you happen to, before I ask this question, have you ever seen the show Survivor or Big Brother? Um, I think I've seen Big Brother one time. Okay, Survivor is basically the same thing, except instead of being tra trapped in a house, they're trapped on an island. So basically, I'll preface the question like that, because we have a guest that's on both. Um, this is pretty cool right now. Um, we had an athlete from Ole Miss that's in Survivor, an athlete from LSU and Big Brother, but... Would you rather be trapped on an island and survivor trying to to outlast them, or would you rather be trapped inside the house, can't go nowhere with the people from Big Brother trying to win? Both, you get a million dollars. I I go with the survivors, man. You know, a bit of adventure, always good. I think island definitely can go to the beach, take a day off. I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. the only problem I, I can do I can do the challenges. I can do the beach. It's when if you're losing challenges or, you know, you get punishments basically because you don't, it's not punishment, but you don't earn rewards. And so you can go days without eating. And uh, I'm a fat kid. Like I, you, some of these people have to go like three days without eating. And then on top of that, they're like in the hot, you know, sun. And it's just like, I don't know, but the, for a million dollars, I guess you do whatever. 
which leads I, to the next question. That. The last question is the money question. We ask every athlete, no matter what the sport, if I was to bring you a briefcase with a million dollars, crisp hundred dollar bills, and say you can have this or Memphis can win a national championship this year, you taking the money or you taking the championship? You know, uh, I got a I got a lot of money to pay back for my parents, but if I can get a national championship. <laughs> I I'm gonna change that with, for no money. I mean, money comes back. I can work with that, but national championship, I got one year left. So I'll tell you, Sarah. We've had I did the count the other day. Um, we're just over three hundred guests since we've been in the show. Only ten have said money. Everybody wants the championship, so you're not doing anything wrong. Championship. It's more than just the ring, right? It's the it's the memories. It's the hard work. Um, it's you know. A chat, you're you're accomplishing something so if you it seems like a lot do but if you break it down statistically with how many people play um very few can say that they've won one so i agree with you but you are off the hot seat is there anything you want to plug or promote um you know obviously uh if you want to put out your social media if they want to follow you i don't know how active you are on it obviously go follow memphis women's soccer on instagram they have amazing videos um, you can not just see the highlights, but you can see them mic'd up at practice, being goofy, all that good stuff. Um, but you have anything you want to plug? Uh, my Instagram tag is sarah.hack. Other than that, not much. Not much. Yeah, y'all don't usually it's a chance to plug NIL deals and stuff, but can't do it. But next year, go out and support these girls. They won't let you down. I talked about the physicality, I talked about the technicality in which they play. Um, Memphis is a well-oiled machine. We need to get more and more fans out there. Um, this year, I thought was had some games where it's pretty big, but want to start doing it on a consistent basis. But look forward to seeing you out there this fall. If there's anything we can do for you along the way, Sarah, just reach out. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. That's Sarah Hag, everybody. If you like hearing her story or you just like hearing Average Joe's talk X's and O's, please like and share the podcast on Facebook. Retweet us on Twitter. Listen, subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and Anchor. As always, comments, hugs, love, feedback, all that good stuff is welcome. We'll be back Monday night. Daniel will be back. He's This vacation feels like it's been forever. I'm here by myself. But we're going to be back. We're going to actually stay in the M-Town. We're going to be talking to Memphis baseball stud Dante Stewart. But in the meantime, remember, strong body, sharp minds, grit and grind all the time. We are out.